Loka di magning tam vachatas mai, ya ishtaka ya vatirva yatava, sachapitat pratyavadadya toktang, atasyam rityu ponareva tushtang. Death told him of the fire that is the source of the world, the class and number of bricks, and also the manner of arranging the fire. And Nachiketa repeated verbatim with understanding all these as they were spoken. Then being satisfied with this, death said. Now here's Shankaracharya's Tika. Tasmai to him, to Nachiketa, death uvacha spoke of. Tam loka di magnim, that fire that is being dealt with and that was prayed for by Nachiketa, the fire which, as Virat, preceded the world since it was the first embodied being. Moreover, ya ishtaka, the class of bricks that are to be collected for the sacrificial altar. Yavativa, how many the bricks are to be in number. Yatava, or how, how the fire is to be arranged. All this he said, this is the significance. Sacha api, and he, Nachiketa, too, Pratyavadat, repeated verbatim with understanding, tat, all that, yatoktam, just as death had spoken, ata, then, tushtaha, being satisfied by his repetition, mrityuhu, death, puna eva aha, said over again, desiring to offer another boon beside the three. Namaste. So here we are continuing with Kata Upanishad, first chapter, verse 15 and 16. And this is about the fourth boon. Now somebody's going to say, well, you only went through two boons so far, <laughs> which were what? The satisfaction of Nachiketa's father, Gotama. And number two, the Nachiketa fire. So, this fire is not an ordinary fire, although it's spoken of as if it was a Vedic sacrificial rite. It's way, way beyond that because this fire is called Virat. Virat Rupa means the first embodied living being, the first form, the universal form. In Bhagavad Gita, there's a whole chapter about it. So you can look at that if you want to know more about it. And it's also said that this fire is located in the intelligence of the sacrificer. So in other words, it's not a physical fire. It's a concept. It's a view, a state of consciousness. So this state of consciousness is that of before Vishnu, before Brahma, before any other living beings in the universe, the Virata Rupa is the idea of the creation, the concept of an upadi, a covering over Brahman that gives rise to the uh, space-time continuum, I guess you could call it, the uh, type of a space or the type of a location where the material manifestation can take place. So this is extremely fundamental, extremely high, uh, at least from the point of view of anyone living in the material world. And not only that, the properties of this fire are that they grant eternal life within the context of the universe. And death speaks 
that he knows this fire well. In fact, he used it to become death. So I'll talk more about death after the next shloka. But try to understand, this is an extra boon. This is an extra uh, gift that death is giving to Nachiketa because he's so pleased with his understanding. Tama bravit priyamano mahatma varam tavehadya dadami bhuyaha tadaiva namna bhavitaya magni shrinkang chema mekarupangrihana Feeling delighted, that high-souled one said to him, Out of favor towards you, I now grant another boon. This fire will be known by your name indeed, and accept this multiform necklace as well. Shankaracharya's Tika. How did he say? Priyamanaha, being delighted, feeling highly pleased at the fitness of the disciple. Mahatma, the high-souled one, one who was not narrow-minded. Tam, to him, to Nachiketa. Abravit said, Iha, here, out of delight. Tava, for you, a fourth boon. Adya, now, Dadami, I offer. Bhuyaha, Again, I am Agni, this fire, the fire that is being spoken of by me, Bhavita, will become famous, Tava Eva Namna, by your name indeed. Cha, moreover, Grihana, accept, Imam, this, Shrinkam, necklace, which is Aneka Rupam, multiformed and variegated, resounding, set with jewels and of various hues. Or, shrinkam may mean the course that consists of rites and is not ignoble. You accept. The idea is this. You accept an additional knowledge about variegated karma, multiformed because it leads to various results. Now, this is very interesting. You see, the character of death, I get ecstatic <laughs> when I think about this. You know, we're all going to have to meet death. Like Nachiketa, we're all going to have to come within death's realm. It's inevitable. Buddha says one's death is born along with one's birth. And any astrologer can tell you that. The death is there in the birth chart. Simply has to be read out or interpreted. Uh, there's a common saying, the way it begins is the way it ends. <laughs> so we are born as corporeal beings in this material world. And whatever has a beginning has an end. So we're going to have to meet death. Now, what kind of a being is death? It's stated here that he's not narrow-minded. He's broad-minded. He's very generous. Really, he is trying to give us liberation. But our problem is we're so ignorant, we're so attached, we're so conditioned by material existence that we cling to the body. We resist death. We fight against death. He's trying to give us liberation. But we don't want it. We want to cling to the body. And we have to be forcibly dragged by the Yamadutas. Well, that's really not the ideal way to come before death. Huh? The example of Nachiketa is there that he came voluntarily. He came with a purpose not only to help his father, but to attain personal liberation for himself and to attain ultimate knowledge of self-realization. 
We'll see this in the upcoming shlokas. So, death is very broad-minded. He's so pleased with Nachiketa because he learned all the details of the Nachiketa fire and was able to repeat them with understanding. In other words, he realized the Nachiketa fire. But what is this fire? This fire of the Virat is the fire, well, you could call it the fire of entropy. It is the time factor that reduces everything and drags it to death. Huh? I often use the example of an old house or an old tr tree sitting uh, out there in the weather and over the years it deteriorates as if it was being burnt up and the Buddha confirms he says this world is burning the mind is burning consciousness is burning it's all a flame it's being used up everything is finite everything is limited Everything has a fixed period of existence, and when that period is over, it's finished. So, I wrote a song once, a rap song. <laughs> All fabrications are subject to cessation. <laughs> so, uh, this is the characteristic of everything in the material world. Even the Virat itself, that fire of space and time that serves as the stage or the setting for the other material manifestations, is limited in time. And at the end, Shiva does his dance and burns it all up to ashes. That's why the followers of Shiva put the ashes on their forehead that this world is ashes. The ultimate destination of everything in this world is ashes. It's all going to be burnt by the fire of time. So now Nachiketa understands this. And because he understands this, his purpose is only to attain a higher state of being. It's not to try to grab and claw and somehow struggle back into another material body and take birth again? That's stupid. If you get to face death, if you get to meet death, means you're already substantially on the way to liberation. And if you approach him favorably, approach him voluntarily with submission and learn from him, oh, what an opportunity, huh? because he has realized all these things. That's why he's in the position of being death, of granting others liberation from material conditioning. So one should use the opportunity of death to give up the attachment, the conditioning of the material body and accept a higher state of existence according to one's qualification. If your qualification is simply a good karma, then you can go to a heavenly planet according to the ability and live there for a long time. Enjoy and also learn and advance spiritually much, much greater than you can on this planet with all of its obstacles all of its negative energies and such. So you should take the opportunity because death is very liberal. He's very broad-minded, he's generous. He gives an extra boon to Nachiketa beyond what he had promised in the first place. And he gives a very valuable and special necklace. Huh? This necklace is variegated Aneka. Anekaha means it's not just one. Huh? So when we get the actual view of the material world 
and how we take body after body out of ignorance and so on. And we suffer. We suffer because we are not meant to be limited like that. We are meant for freedom. And we all have this drive to attain freedom. The problem is we're attached to the material body and enjoyment and so on, and we don't want to give that up, even though it's causing us suffering. But this is ignorance. So death gives Nachiketa this necklace, variegated necklace of many forms, many colors, many shapes. We can imagine that it that changes in real time and like that, which is the deep knowledge of karma, cause and effect, so that one can see actually what is the result of every action. Because every action, including mental and verbal actions, become causes for one's future life. Therefore, one should be very careful to only create causes that lead to one's elevation in the future and not degradation and continued attachment and conditioning of uh, material existence. That is what is being taught here. And one who gets this can approach death as a disciple, as a student, and learn the wonderful lessons that he can teach and receive his benedictions, which lead to enlightenment and self-realization. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.